stuck in traffic, wandering the mall, caged in your cubicle, fed up. Some have chucked it in, taken a chance, gone to Argentina, made wine, and started a family. I have my family here with me. For me, it's paradise. Others have fled to Spain and found love. You can turn dreams into realities. You just have to be stubborn. They took a risk, got out of their rut, and now they're living exotic lives. Carla Darocas left Canada, crossed the Atlantic, and found love in Spain. Honest to God, I, I was like coming up to my 40th birthday. Life is good, I got everything going on, but I'm lonely. So she took a risk, closed shop, said goodbye to her parents, and married Jose Darocas. Now they live on the Costa Blanca on the east coast of Spain. It's one of the most exotic locations on Earth. Destiny falls at me. And I either jump on or, or I don't jump on. Carla and Jose have built a successful business here in Spain. Selling real estate depends on the economy, and these days the market is tough. But things have been tough in the past. At times, she had trouble finding her place in Spanish life. But she kept at it, always giving in the hope of receiving. When she learned that the Spanish diet was low on omega-3, she imported flaxseed from Saskatchewan and sold it on the internet. When she realized that small businesses weren't online, she gave lessons on how to set up websites. When she saw that businesswomen needed an association for promoting themselves, she started one that also funds shelters for abused women. I have a bunch of networks, uh, the Spain Health Network, and uh, one of the members of the Spain Health Network is Trudy Van Dorp, and she's hosting a World Health Day up in Cumbre del Sol, where I live. And she's bringing in all kinds of... Is that why she's bringing the Tibetan monks? I do appreciate everything that comes to me. I, I am openly thanking people all the time. I'm openly uh, thanking the universe all the time. And I try to give back tenfold. Spain is the perfect place for free-spirited Carla. And mid-March is a perfect time for her because Valencia is kick-starting its week-long Fias Festival, the wildest festival in all of Europe. Carla and Jose are just two of the thousands of people who've come to the front of the 15th century Basilica of the Virgin to watch hundreds of bouquets being placed on a huge wooden frame. The flowers are an offering to the patron saint of Valencia, Our Lady of the Forsaken. In the Middle Ages, the Fias Festival was a celebration of the spring equinox, and now it's one big gravity-defying chance to party and poke fun at politicians and celebrities by building huge paper mache statues that in just a few days will be ceremonially burnt to the ground. Control isn't in the Spanish vocabulary at all. It's, uh, it's mayhem, it's chaos, it's surreal. You have to learn to be accepted as a very surreal place because if you don't, you'll go crazy. And I think the Spaniards want to drive the foreigners crazy sometimes. In Valencia, Spain, it's 2 p.m., time for the mascleta, the main event of the day. The mascleta dates back to the 17th century when the Arabs ruled this part of Spain and they'd shoot powerful fireworks into the sky to intimidate their opponents. It's just a whirlwind. Every time you turn around, the colors everywhere. Color, 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 it's fabulous. And of course, it's just nonstop. The mascleta is a pyrotechnic drama in which the protagonist is earth-shattering sound. It's not like North American fireworks with their spectacular displays. Here, it's all about the explosions. The competition is all about the rhythmic patterns. And if you didn't know that, you would just think, oh, these people are insane lighting off all these daytime firecrackers. And you can feel the final earthquake-like blasts in your bones. Forty thousand people stuck in this little square in the middle of the city, and these bombs are going off. And you know, I'm jumping out of my skin. But then you realize that nobody's pushing, nobody's shoving, nobody's like swearing at you. Everybody's calm, and you think, God, that's amazing. It's Valencia's architecture that really excites Carla. 
the cathedral in the old quarter, and all the Roman, Gothic, and Renaissance buildings. Then there's the white, futurist structure in the City of Arts and Sciences designed by Valencian architect Santiago Calatrava. For Carla, it's Spain's art which inspires her own art in her home on Cumbre del Sol. You can look up and down every coast in Spain and you will not find a cape as pretty as this one. The rocks, the, just the way everything's laid out, the coves, the caves, the park, everything about it just sells paradise. You have to be stubborn about your dreams. And when people say to you, oh no, that could never happen, it's not true. You can turn dreams into realities. You just have to be stubborn. And you have to keep that vision very clear in your mind. Carla de Rocas first found young love on this boardwalk in Javia, on Spain's Costa Blanca. It was the summer of 88. Carla was a student and Jose was working bars. Well, he was really, really cute. You know, he had this long rockabilly hair. Oh, thank you. And uh, he had the same shoes as I did, the uh, all-stars, you know, the high tops. Right. We just had so much fun. Everybody liked him, everybody trusted him. He was the good guy. Everybody said that. Everybody on this entire beachfront. Yeah, I am a gentleman. Still, I am a gentleman. <laughs> Our love was always really crazy. It was always about laughing. It was always about sh sharing crazy things and not being afraid. After that summer in Spain, she went back to Canada, never imagining she'd ever see Jose again. Carla is an only child the daughter of Harry and Ruby Ingleton, and she's come back to Waterloo to visit them. The most I remember of Carla, as you say, she always was a leader. Okay, here's the best one. I'll show you the best one first. Look at that. <laughs> oh, look at the high heels. That's when oh, I love to play dress up. Oh, remember the flipped hair? Farrah Fawcett oh, days, yeah. remember? Oh, yeah, there you go. There's the Farrah Fawcett days. Yeah. In 1984, she entered the University of Waterloo. Artist Virgil Burnett was her professor. Well, we have similar tastes in movies. I love Benuel, and so does she. She likes Salvatore Dali much more than I do. And so, she, you know, for two or three years, we talked about very little else. She always had a streak of, well, I won't say craziness, but, uh, <laughs> Well, like, a, you know, I really believe that you can turn dreams into reality. Now, I mean, that was one of Bunuel's basic premise, and, and you know, you can dream about something and set about a plan to, to make it into a reality. Once Carla graduated from university, she put to work her knack for turning interests into business opportunities. She began writing reviews of blues artists like Paul James. Then she set up websites, started a zine, got into e-business and went to California. First time I seen you on my street I told my partner you sure look sweet I fell in love before I knew your name Gotta, gotta, gotta give me some of it But while she was in California, things went bad. At times, she'd wake up in the middle of the night, terrified. And I'm thinking, God, I'm going to be 40 soon. I've done it. I've done everything. But I'm not married yet. And why is that? And why? 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 Literally, next day, I get an email. I just looking for, uh, for Carla on the internet. And it was so tough to find him because I remember the name. I remember the place, Bowenville. But she was not in Canada. She was in California. So uh, I just search and searching and searching and searching and I find finally uh, the name for Carla on the scene magazine that was a magazine in California and I think, oh, I think that's it, the, di the director from scene magazine. So <laughs> I just, you know, make an email and say, hey, hello, hello. Yeah, I remember that day just like it was yesterday. I just was checking my email like you do every day and there it was in the uh, header Coco Drillo, which was our... That was Jose's pet name. I mean, who else is going to be called Cocodrillo? Oh, yeah, I signed a Cocodrillo, yes. It was the spring of 2001, and in the 13 years since they parted, he'd never forgotten Carla. 
He even kept all their old pictures and love letters. I never had a boyfriend the whole time I lived in Ontario or here at the university or whatever that had that same bravado, that had that I am proud to be who I am and I will just make everything happen and I love you and that's it, end of story. And so he flew to California and their love rekindled. They had a few blissful days in Los Angeles, but on the very day in September 2001 that Jose proposed, all hell broke loose. When 9-11 happened, and honest to God, he was saying, marry me, marry me, marry me, like every five minutes, because it was a really scary time. And, you know, I mean, it was, we just thought, oh God, like life is just too short not to take the risk. So they took it. Carla raced back to Canada and packed, Jose flew home. And a week later, Carla married a man she hardly knew. Carla de Rocas' search for love took her from Canada to Spain's Costa Blanca. Today, she and Jose are going to Jose's hometown, Shativa, 50 kilometers inland from Cumbre del Sol. It's a fantastic route through magnificent vistas, past Elephant Mountain, the San Martin Monastery, and orchards of Valencian oranges, which are sold by the roadside. That's something you don't get in Canada. Really sweet. sour? It's sweet. Is it? Is it yeah. really sweet? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god, right. how is right. that possible? Yes, yes, it is. Oh, nobody will believe you now. Oh, I can't. <laughs> There's another thing that's different. The sense of time is just in the air. Do you know what I mean? Like, the, you just live by the rhythms of the day. And I think that's really interesting. And the fact that they have the siesta in the afternoon and I like that. I like the way that the day is kind of broken up. It's not all jammed into eight hours. Shativa is a centuries-old town full of history, with a castle at the top of Sierra del Castillo and the ancient remains of Iberian, Roman, Visigoth, and Arabic settlements buried below. Well, there are two pops that raised here in Shativa, Alexander and Calisto. So there was a very powerful pop back in these days, and the people from uh, Shativa, the Catholic people from Shativa, are very proud because there was something um, historical. The Shativa, this little town, there was back in these days the center for the Catholic Romanic Church. When Jose and Carla came to Spain after their wedding, Shativa is where they settled. So we went to Shativa, where, where Jose was born where he had roots, where, you know, we knew people, his aunts and uncles and so on. They moved into Jose's old apartment, and right away, there were challenges. She needed a residence card, a job, and lessons in Spanish. There is a lot of hoops and jumps. Even though I'm married to a Spaniard, I am still considered, I'm a Canadian. They just have no power, no, no anything. In Spain, it's still Fias Week, and sometimes it seems that the whole country is celebrating. This is Shativa's Mascleta. Not as big as Valencia's, but still impressive. It thrills Jose, which Carla finds infectious and endearing. They're very tactile culture. Rock and roll, baby! And it's wonderful. It's a really warm and reassuring thing to know that you can walk down the street hand in hand, you can kiss whenever you want. I mean, open displays of affection are no big deal. Well, I love Jose because he has no other desires except in my direction. And that's, that's just a very, you know, it makes, it makes you feel strong and it makes you to be able to, and he's proud of me. I will have had a really crap day and I'll be in the kitchen and I'll have my rubber gloves on to here, okay? And Jose will sneak up behind me and, you know, start kissing my arm right up from the rubber glove to the neck, you know, and down the other side and stuff. And I've got rubber gloves on and I'm looking a mess, but he doesn't care. You know what I mean? <laughs> he's just, he's just a little love muffin. But if there's one thing that rivals her love of Jose, it's her love of art. Yeah. How's it look? Good. I was trying to paint my dreams. 
I had a whole series of dreams of these fish that came out of the water and they were half cats. They were half cats, they were half fish. And they would tenderly hold baby fish, like babies. So I painted those. And my mother has all those paintings. They're all at my mother's house. Well, this is an orchid that I did when I first arrived. A lot of people tell me that it, it frightens them. It looks like a big tongue hanging out. So, you know, um, cats, just for fun. Maybe just under an hour, 45 minutes or so, yeah. This one and the one you're gonna see over there, I did for International Women's Day. And it's just kind of symbolic kind of painting. And this painting over here, the kissing giraffes, I do that painting as a wedding gift. And this is a small version of it, but for big wedding gifts, I'll do big kissing giraffes. And they, people love them. Spain is celebrating St. Joseph's Day, the final day of the Fias Festival. Friends are coming over and Jose is cooking Valencia's most famous dish, paella. Green beans, white beans, tomato, chicken, rabbit. You can put the shrimps as well, but we have no shrimps today, so I make a typical Valencian uh, paella. Love can lead you anywhere. Carla's love for Jose took her to Spain, and today, surrounded by friends and family traditions, she feels at one with the world. So I don't feel that I'm Canadian or Spanish or anything. I just feel that I'm just a person of the world, that I am just Carla in the universe. And wherever I hang my hat is home. You know what I mean? Like, just, I'm, I, I love to travel, but I love having my own home, too. I love having a husband and a dog and a floor to mop. It's, it's great. This all is fictional. In Cumbre del Sol, most of her friends are expats. It makes her feel at home, surrounded by like-minded people. Next for Carla, it's on to Denia and the climax of the Fias festivities. Denia is seven kilometers north of Cumbre del Sol. Its Fias celebrations are second only to Valencia's in both sound and spectacle. Each of these Fias, placed at key intersections throughout the city, is like a cartoon effigy of someone whose pomposity should be punctured. It's the flip dark side of a beauty pageant. At midnight, one by one, each will be set afire. The result is an orgy of flame called the crema. It's outrageous. I mean, look at those giant fias. I mean, they're huge paper mache sculptures. And look at the effort and the money that goes into them just to be burnt to the ground. How extreme that is to just work at it something for months and months and months to have it on display and then just burn the whole thing to the ground as though it never existed. I mean, that's incredible. Some say it's all about eternal cycles of creation and destruction, light and dark, life and death. But here, at this moment, it's all about crowd cheering entertainment. St. Joseph, the patron saint of carpenters, must wonder what he did to deserve all this. And how does this all fit in with Carla? I just believe in that circle of life. I mean, you know, you give, you receive, you give, you receive, what goes around comes around. You know, all those things that you hear.
This chapter of Carla's story ends here in Javier, Spain, where it started. It's a crazy love story of Carla and Jose finding each other after all those years, and of Carla forging a new life in an exotic land, in a country she has come to love. And although she misses Canada, her friends, and family, she doesn't regret the chances she's taken. I think it would be like the worst thing to have regrets. Oh, I wish I'd gone to university. I wish I had moved to Spain. I wish I had married my true love. I wish, I wish, I wish. Can you imagine going to your grave with all that heaviness? You know, I couldn't do it. So I've really set about making sure that that never happens. And that's why I tell people too, is like, never give up on love because you just, love energy will find you if you want it. I think a lot of people just shut down their love energy and they don't move their love energy out there. And if you don't move it out there, then how's anybody gonna attach themselves onto it? All in all, it's quite a life. Yeah, we've come full circle. We come in with we nothing here. We met here and now we live here. We come in use with nothing here. Use with our hands and our dreams. And uh, in uh, the last four or five years, we're building everything. We're building the house, we're building the money, we're building the connections, we're building the family, we're building everything here. So... It's <laughs> amazing what you can do when you're in love. Carla, too, has found happiness in Spain. Both she and Maurizio have that in common. They're now spending their days living exotic lives. <laughs>